Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models, and I've got another kit review for you today. This is a very strange one, and a confession, I only bought this kit to get this thing, the pilot. You very rarely see moulded, um, seated in pilots in any aircraft kits these days, I know it's uh, I'm a, like a broken record, but I saw this, I saw a 116 scale, do I have any 116 scale aircraft? Well, no, I've got a, I've got a 118 scale, is it close enough? I don't know. I bought this on spec, on speculation that... You know, the Jason, the um, the guy who sculpts the Tacon figures, I've got uh, a lot of the Tacon 116 tankettes. His figures are really, really good for styrene. They're, they're top quality. I thought, ah, oh, I'll give this a go. I bought this on sale, and my intention was just take the pilot out and then push the kit onto someone else, because most people don't don't um, don't paint the pilot anyway. So I thought I could just, you know, get half my money back by people just putting the kit together. But I did a little bit of research online. And there's actually a fantastic YouTube video, no audio, but don't need it, where they show you how they launch one of these things off the bloody back deck of a U-boat. And it looks freakishly simple. <laughs> it looks really strange. So I'm, I'm tempted to actually just build the whole thing myself. So let's have a look inside the box, um, or outside the box. Typical tack on, upside down Miss Jane. It's got, they give you all the sprues on the outside. They give you markings for um, some captured examples, some French and, uh, and my black cockatoos outside are having a good old belly laugh. So let's open up and have a look. Uh, I've only opened this up to look at the, the pilot. I haven't looked at anything else. Instruction booklets in a nice plastic bag. There's a big Freda photo etch, which most of this, oh, so I'm sorry it's glary, is seat belts, but there are a few other little pieces looks like some uh, yeah they look familiar those uh, control rods for the rotors now if you're wondering what the hell this is what what sort of aircraft is this? is it an aircraft well it's technically a, it's a roto kite or a, it's a gyrocopter basically an unpowered um, you know lifting vehicle so basically the u-boat would go as fast as it can across the ocean and the actual airflow over the the wings the rotor blades which are in here somewhere there we go down the back Turning them would create uh, would create lift, and you you, you uh, change the pitch of the of the way they're they're turning, and that provides a lift. And it would actually float. I think they would say a couple hundred meters. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Above the um, yeah, several hundred meters above the U-boat, so it allows the observer, the pilot, to um, to see much further. Out, I think 40 kilometers out to the horizon. So that's pretty good. So here we go. We got three major screws. Let me open it up properly. Let's start with the instructions with uh, the uh, nice little blurb at the front. We've got a nice colour uh, booklet here and it's the usual, you know, don't glue this something to it to your ear, whatever you, sprue map, and then we get to the instructions. So I've had a quick look through the instructions before I started filming and at first, oh, this looks fairly easy, but <laughs> it starts to get complex. If you're a fan of rigging, doing some wing nut wings, World War One sorts type, type things, uh, this will be up your boat because there's a lot of fairly delicate things here. Uh, I was looking, for example, the instrument panel. A lot of the, a lot of the cables and wires are actually moulded in, which is a virtue of the scale itself. But then you get into things like the um, the control, the rudder controls here. You've got some straps. You've got to bend out of the photo etch, and then moving onwards and onwards, there's areas where they show you to cut some of this nylon wire. So they give you this very long piece. I don't know if you can actually see that. There it is wire inside and I was like what is that for well you have to actually brace the rotors you have to brace some of the uh, these landing skids underneath here um, here we go these are the first things you need to do some some bracing through the the eyelets on the on the skids uh, on this backpack thing I don't know what that is it's not a fuel tank I don't know maybe it's a parachute or something you know there's some more straps to do so it wasn't just seat belt straps that I saw there was other straps and then we get into the after you build the seat and the uh, the mast for the rotors you get to the rotor connections and they're quite fiddly I mean this down here there's quite a lot of small little parts here and I'll just fast forward and give you a look at the the photo edge without the glare sorry about that yeah all these sort of control uh, surfaces here that you have to cut open I mean they're they're not that large if I get my Tamiya tweezers out you can see okay you're gonna be easily get a grip on some of those pieces they're not you know one seven hundred scale ladders or something but just, just to tell you, I mean, some of the pieces are in styrene. I'll have a close look at them later, but as you go along, see this, you need to cut uh, these bracing wires to, to keep the, the rotors nice and rigid together, and they go on top. So it's only 14 parts until you get to the pilot, and the pilot's in multi, multi parts, okay? And he gets put down there with a few photo etched seat belts. 
if you want to use them. If not, just, it looks like it's easily to attach them to, to the thing itself. They give you three marking options, uh, captured British, captured French, and the original, oops, the, the, uh, <laughs> the original, uh, yeah, German one with a cereal on the rudder. So enough of that, let's have a look at the decals, which I must admit are really disappointing. The uh, blues, the same way out of register, they, particularly on the, the these Randalls, and they're super thick. And I can see some, I don't know what, they seem to be pockmarked with glue or something. These do not look good at all. Uh, I think the only benefit of, <laughs> of these decals are the instrument dials. The uh, tail code there looks looks a lot better, although the carrier film is very thick. And yeah, the carrier, the, I'm not too sure about these Hulkenkrausers, I think that's the correct way to pronounce those. Yeah, not happy with those. Oh, the yeah, like I said, the and the red seems to be out out as well. Hmm. This scale you probably want to mask it. So let's look at the sprues. We'll start with the C sprue because C is good. Uh, Tacom. Uh, Tacom are known for doing lots and lots of ejection pins, <laughs> like Dragon kits of old, and, and you know the parts look pretty good. I can't see any major faults here. Uh, the attachment points are always the, the bone of contention with tack on with their sort of fine things, but uh, they're not, they're okay. Um, this sort of weird thing that you do with these really big raised ejection pins, but the, you know, the attachment points are quite fine. I'm only talking about a millimeter or so, so that's, that's pretty good. So that's the rotors. There's some good detail on the, where the rotors attached there, but again, lots of ejection pin marks. Looks like they've been slide molded and the sort of the, the fabric sort of texture, I guess you could say to them. Looks pretty good. Let's look at the next one. Go from A, from C to B, and as you can see, tack on. They do a nice thing. They they cut out the uh, the marking at the top there, so you know which sprue it is. So this is, uh, well, I think that's the mast and some of the rotor parts. And there's lots of there's no big parts here, apart from the rudder. I can see over there. You got the instrument panel here. If I flip that over, yeah. So you get all the full detail behind the instrument panel and all the, the cables are all done as one. Some of these are really fine, so you want to get out your absolute sharpest sprue cutters for doing these. And then the final sprue, there's not much to it. It's gonna, I mean, I don't think the kit's gonna take that long to make, but I think it's just the fiddliness of it um, with all those uh, photo edge parts and so forth. This is a, yeah, like I said, it won't take forever, but it could be done on a weekend, I think, without much fuss. Tack them are really good. So we've got some really good canvas sort of texture on the seat there. And I think that's the seat back, I think. And then the seats themselves. I can't find any um, ejection pin marks that are on the inside of parts. Part, you know, that obviously is on the bottom. Yeah, that's on the bottom. So you're not going to see that. And look at that. The, the texture on that seat looks pretty good too. So yeah, so, and then, you know, there's the cushion, but the ejection pin marks on the inside, you won't see them. So top marks to tack on, there's not like there's any major problems or faults I can see here. This is a really nice moulding here, of the, the, I think that's the main mast where it sits on. This is extremely fragile, I'd be super careful with that, don't go at a bullet a gate taking that off the sprue. And the final sprue is the pilot which I've um, left in the bag just to show you how tack on does this quite well. No staples like Tamiya, Ugh, Tamiya, why do you put staples in your bag? And it's, it reseals, there's a little bit of stickiness, tackiness to the end of that tape, so you can seal it back up again. All right, let's take him out and have a look. Uh, first thing first, let's look, let's zoom in, Chris, zoom in. So his face looks okay, fairly neutral, like he's, he's not actually, <laughs> the, the facial expression on that pilot I saw in that YouTube video, I'll see if I can get a photo of it. When he, when he touched down again, it was sort of like, oh my God, <laughs> when he finally got back on, um, on the, you know, pitching submarine in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean. So yeah, the face looks all right, fairly neutral sort of face. I think he's only got a head covering here. Yeah, there's his, uh, you see they've slide molded his, his cap. Okay. And it's got a little fine seam line through the middle of it, but the rest of the figure is really lovely. I mean, look at this. So we got, there's my pointy sticky thing. So his harness is, oh, I see what they've done. They've got, that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. They've, they've recessed out where the photo etched seatbelts go over the top. Uh, not seatbelts or yeah, straps, but the rest of them are still there. See, see that? See how it's recessed there? So you, okay, that's an interesting way to do that. So it's sort of a multi-part, um, probably a few 
few too many parts are necessary, but yeah, it looks pretty good. Is there even, oh, there's no, he's got flat sole shoes with no, no grip on them. Put them in camera, Chris. This is what I'm interested in, and if you just give me a moment, I'll go get the seat that I'm planning to use this on. So here's the 118th scale seat, one piece molding seat from my uh, Hobby Boss, which is actually, I think it's more 21st century's toys. 118th scale Mesh Schmidt 262 that I've got, uh, that of course didn't come with a pilot, and I really love to have it posed, and that's a, the reason why I bought this kit. So if I compare the, look at the seat back to the, to the 116, to the 118, so it's slightly smaller, uh, they're about the same size, and even, okay, the cushion's a bit bigger on, on there, so I'm sort of hoping that, you know, this might be a tall, <laughs> a tall Luftwaffe pilot, even if I have to truncate his legs a little bit to get him inside the thing. But yeah, that's that's my intention, was to, uh, here's, here's the tub for the, for the mesh schmidt, for the, for the 262, and uh, so that's my intention, was to, to use this pilot for the 262, but I might end up just doing this straight out of the box, and I think I might even build this one soon. It, it looks like a really, really fun kit to do. So that's about it. There's not much more to say. So in conclusion, nice, very quick review of a fascinating kit that Tacom have done. They've done some really interesting subjects in uh, recent times, and this lends itself to doing, well, quite a few diorama ideas. I mean, if you want to build the upper half of the conning tower of the of the U-boat, there's plenty of references for you to do that, and I believe there's even a kit coming out or, or already out to do that in that scale. Um, or if you just want to do it just straight out of the box, do it as a museum piece, because there is, I think, a replica or one of the original ones of these still available. I mean, beyond the sort of finicky sort of stuff you've got here on the on the rotor heads and, um, you know, a bit of photo etch uh, seatbelts going on there. But, you know, for someone who's, if you've done biplanes or, or that sort of thing before, in this scale, I mean, it's, you know, unless you've got two left thumbs like I am and pretty... You know, you can't put two things together properly and you need to rely on Tamiya kits to actually assemble a kit. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard to do. Just take your time. There's not a lot of parts. Three sprues. The painting, I mean, okay, the painting is quite easy. It's one color. Highlight a few of the control cables, some of the, you know, pieces of brass that are obviously there that they use. And you're done. And you don't have to do the pilot. In fact, you can send the pilot to me if you don't want it. And I'll use him for practice or for some of my bigger scale aircraft. So there you go. Oh, the other thing, of course, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the, the decals. The decals are the major downside in this. They're out of register. They're not good color. Uh, the only good ones there are the dials. So, you know, I would, I would sort of, I'll just grab them here. I would sort of try to find some good marking, uh, mask sets or something. I mean, these Randalls, if you want to do a British version, that looks to me like a 148 scale um, Spitfire you know, decals, I would mar I would never use, do that process. I'll just, if you're gonna make that a French one, I would just paint the tail completely separate, all white, mask off the red, paint red, mask off the blue, paint red, you're done. It takes you about half an hour. Sort of worrying about these, these decals that just look completely way out of shape, way out of color. So that's the end of that. That's my little review. I hope you enjoy that. And uh, till next time, have fun building.